Hi, welcome or welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to make this modern crochet cape. It's easily adjustable for size, and I show you how to do that in the video. I will also include sizing and pattern details in the description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. For this project, I'm using 420 grams of 8 ply acrylic yarn, a 4.5 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, and a darning needle. If you have stitch markers, they will also be useful. The yarn that I'm using is the Four Seasons Marvel 8 ply acrylic yarn, which I believe is the same as DK weight or worsted weight. And the suggested hook for this one is four millimeters, but I'm going to be using 4.5. To start the cape, I'm going to make a slip knot and insert my 4.5 millimeter hook. Now we're going to chain up three. Once you've got three, we're going to block off that last stitch. So we're not going to go into that last stitch that we did. We're going to go into the second stitch from the hook and we're going to do a modified half double crochet. So to do that, we're going to yarn over, insert into that second chain from the hook, yarn over, pull through, and now we're going to pull this first stitch through the other two loops on the hook. So you just pull that first one through the next two. And we're going to do that again in the next stitch. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and now we're going to pull the front loop through the next two loops. That is the end of row one. Now we're going to do a chain up of one, turn our work, and into both of those stitches that we just did, we're going to do the same stitch that we did, the modified half double crochet, but this time we're going to do it into the back loop only. So you can see here, you've got, this is the front loop, the one closest to your body, and that's the back loop away from your body, we're gonna go only in through that back loop. So we're gonna yarn over, insert into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through too. So we'll do that again. And now we're going to chain up four. One, two, three, four. And now we're going to turn our work and we're going to skip the first stitch. So we're gonna go into the second chain from the hook like we did at the start. So skipping that first chain, we're going to do our modified half double crochet into the second loop from the hook. And then we're gonna do it in the next two One, two. So now you should have done the modified half double crochet into three of those chains. And now we are up to the portion where we did these stitches the last time around. So now we're gonna go back to doing it in the back loop only. So yarn over, insert into that back loop and one more into that back loop. So now you should have five stitches. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a modified half double crochet into every stitch of the previous row. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna chain up four again and do exactly what we did. So I'll show you how to do that one more time. So now we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now we're going to do five back loop modified half double crochets. So go ahead and do one in every stitch, going all the way down into the back loop only. And now that we're at the end, we're going to chain up four again. And now we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna do exactly what we did for this row here. We're going to do three modified half double crochets 
into the second, third and fourth chain from the hook. And then we're going to do the back loop modified half double crochets into the last five stitches. So go ahead and skip that first chain. Going into the second chain from the hook, I'm gonna do my modified half double crochet. So we've got three, and now I'm going to do five into the back loop only. Then when we get to the end, we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now we're going to continue doing the exact same thing in every row. So every second row that we do, we're going to be adding three stitches. So on the way back down, we didn't add any stitches, but on the way up, we're going to add three stitches onto the end by doing a chain up of four and then stitching into the second, third and fourth chain from the hook. So I'll show you one more time, but basically you can just keep going until you've made this the height that you want it to be. You also won't need to adjust this section per size because no matter what size you're making, it's not going to make it any bigger or smaller to adjust this size, but it will make the V deeper and longer. So if you want the front of your V to be deeper than the one I've made, then you can add some extra rows if you want it to be shorter, add less rows, but this will be the same no matter what size you're making. All right, so we're going to do our back loop modified half double crochet. And now I've just gone into that last stitch. So we are going to chain up four. And now skipping the chain closest to the hook, we're going to do our modified half double crochets into the next three chains. And then into the back loop of all of the stitches left until you get to the end of that row. So in this case it's eight, but every second row there's going to be three stitches added. So now you're going to go ahead and continue doing this pattern until you have 58 rows. So you should be doing the chains on every second row. So you'll have 28 lots of the chains, 29 if you're counting this first one, and in total you'll have 58 rows. So go ahead until you get to that point. Once you have done your 59 rows, your cape will be looking something like this. See, it's quite a big triangle. This is the 59th row here, and I've gone ahead and already done the next row so that I can show you what to do at the top of this one. But basically from the 59th row, we're just going to go straight across. So we're going to do no increases or decreases. I'm just doing the last few stitches in this row to get up to the top. So what we're going to do is do our modified half double crochets. So I'm just doing my second last one. And now into that last stitch in the previous row, we're going to do a modified half double crochet, chain up one, turn our work, and then straight away do another modified back loop half double crochet. So we haven't done any increases or decreases and we've only chained up one to turn around this time. So go ahead and do 58 rows with no increases or decreases for a small medium. It will bring you up to row 117 in total. But basically this section is going to go from the front middle of your body to the back middle of your body. So if you're making a larger size, just make sure that it's big enough to wrap from the middle of your sternum to the middle of your back. I will put in a sizing guide about how many rows it should be for different sizes. For each size up or down in this section, you're just going to need to add or take eight rows 
So an extra small to small is 50 rows, a small to medium is 58 rows, which is what I'm making in this video, a medium to large is 66 rows, a large to extra large is 74 rows, an extra large to 2x is 82 rows, a 2x to 3x is 90 rows, and if you want to make a bigger size than that, you just need to add 8 rows. Once you've done as many rows as you need to do for the size that you're making, join back in and I'll show you how to do the decrease section. So now I've just finished row 58 of this straight section here. So there's the increases and we've got the straight section. And this is row 58 of that section or 117. And I'm just going to do my last modified half double crochet. So now what we're going to do is like normal chain up one, but this time we're going to try to mirror the increases from the other side. So if you'll remember, we used four chains to do our increase, one of those chains being a turning chain. So really it's just three chains, but because it's not the normal width of a stitch, I don't want to do the normal width of a modified half double. So we're actually going to use slip stitches. So all you have to do is three slip stitches in the first three stitches. So we're going to do three back loop slip stitches insert yarn over, pull through, pull through again, and just do three. And now we're going to go back to our modified half double crochets. So now, just like before, we'll go back to doing a regular stitch and you're going to go all the way down doing the regular stitch. When you get to the end, do chain up one as normal, turn around and come back up to the top. And then we're basically going to do the exact same thing again when we get to the top. So when we get up to this stitch, we're not going to count these first three stitches, which were the slip stitches. We're going to go back up to where we did our first modified half double crochet. And from there, we're gonna turn around and do the slip stitches again. So each row is gonna be reduced by the three slip stitches because we're not going to go back over them. So go ahead, go to the end, turn around, come back and I will show you the slip stitch section one more time. And then you can go ahead and keep going until you get down to your last two stitches, which is what we did on this, on this end. We had the two stitches there. So it's going to be another 59 rows, just like on this side. You don't really need to count your rows from here on out, as long as you're doing the three slip stitches and decreasing by three stitches every time, it will just come to a natural point at the end. I know I said I would show you the back loop slip stitch section again at the end of the next row, but I decided to go ahead and do one more row just so that you could sort of see where it was going because it wasn't that easy to see from the last one. So these last three stitches here, one, two, and three, are my back loop slip stitches from the previous row. So we're not going to stitch into them or we're gonna skip them. So these three were the slip stitches and now these three the slip stitches of the previous row. So now I'm going to do my modified back loop half double into the last two stitches, excluding those three. And we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now into those three stitches, we're going to do our back loop slip stitch. So one, two, and three. And now we're going to continue on doing our modified back loop half double crochets going all the way down. So now you just continue doing this until you make a point at the end with only two stitches remaining. And that's where we're going to finish it off, but I will show you how to do that. So go ahead up until there and then join back in and I'll show you what to do next. So you can see here, we've got our three back loop slip stitches, three there, three there, which we won't be stitching into. When we come back up, we're just going to here. So go ahead and finish this section off. Okay, so I've continued to do my decreases and I've done 29 of the three back loop slip stitch decreases. And now you can see I'm up to five stitches left. And if you'll remember, when we started on the other side, we started with two. This is gonna be the last decrease of three and then two stitches in that final row. So I'm just going to chain up one 
and do my three slip stitches. Three, and now I'm going to do my modified back loop half double crochet in the last two stitches. Chain up one, turn my work, and now I'm going to do two modified back loop half double crochets in those first two stitches and I'm not going to touch those three slip stitches because that's what we've been doing for the decreases. So now I'm going to chain up one and I'm going to do a slip stitch into each of those two stitches. So this is going to mimic the chain that we did to start on the other side. So once you've done that, you can chain up one and now you have almost finished this panel. So we've got all of our decreases here, which look the same as the increases on the other side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out all of these steps that we've created through doing our decreases. So now what I'm going to do is we've just chained up one. So I'm going to turn my work and now what I'm going to do in this first back loop slip stitch that we did from the previous row, I'm just going to do two single crochets. So to do that, I'm going to insert through both loops. So we're not going through the back loop this time. You can see here's the front loop and the back loop. We're going through both of them. You can see they're both there. And we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to do one more single crochet into that same stitch. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're going to go into that next stitch along. So we're going to do one single crochet this time. So into that next stitch, I'm going to do one single crochet. And now for the rest of the row, we're going to put one single crochet into each of the slip stitches that we did. So every row we'll be doing three single crochets. We did three in this one, but the very first stitch is the only one that we're doing two single crochets into. Every other stitch is going to have one single crochet. So we're totally skipping this gap. We're not putting any stitches in here and we're gonna jump right ahead and do a single crochet in that next back loop slip stitch that we did. And I'm going to do three for this section. And then we're going to skip the gap and we're going to do another three into the next three back loop slip stitches. So now I'm going to go ahead, going all the way up this row, doing the groups of three single crochets and skipping every gap where we turned around in that previous row. So go ahead and finish going all the way up the row, doing your three single crochets. And then we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. But if you'll remember on the other side where we started, we did chains rather than the slip stitches. So we'll be doing three single crochets into each of the chains that we did, but I will show you how to do that when we get there. Okay, so now we're on to flattening out the edge of the start where we did our increases with the chains. So it's going to be the same as the other flattening out section except this time we're going into the chains instead of the slip stitches. So because I don't have my working yarn connected to this end, I'm going to create a slip knot. Insert my hook. And now I'm going to insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through again, and I'm just going to chain up one. Now into that first chain that we did in that very first foundation chain row, I'm going to do two single crochets, just like we did on the other side. 
and now in every chain going down I'm going to be doing one single crochet so into that next chain one single crochet so now we've got our three chains here for our next row so I'm going to do three single crochets making sure that you skip over the gap between the rows and we're just going to do lots of three single crochets so we're skipping this gap and we're doing three single crochets into that increase that we did just like we were doing with the decreases so skip the gap and into those next three increase chains so go ahead and finish going all the way down and when we get to the end you can go ahead and make the other panel which is identical to this one so you're going to have two identical panels and we're going to stitch them together to make our cape. Okay, so once you've made your two trapezoids, we're going to stitch them together. So first you're going to need to stitch two of the long edges with the diagonals together, and then we're going to stitch that side to that side, sort of making it rounded. You can do that by using a darning needle or by doing slip stitches. I'm gonna do slip stitches um, this is mostly because then one side's going to be have a ridge in it and they'll look a bit different so I can decide which side I'd prefer to wear it on when it comes time to wear it. So choose what you'd like to do and if you want to see how to do the slip stitches I'll show you that right now. Okay so now we've got our two sides together. So now I've finished doing my single crochets going up and I left my tail so that I could keep going. So I've already done a chain up one. So after you've done your last single crochet, just do a chain up one. And now all we're gonna do is go through both sides. So I'm gonna find every single single crochet. So going through the first single crochet in this panel and the first single crochet in this panel. And then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through and pull through again. So we'll do that again. And I'm going through both loops through the second single crochet in this panel the second crochet in the back panel, yarn over, pull through, pull through again. So now you're just gonna go ahead doing slip stitches, going all the way down till you get to the end and then fasten off. Okay, so once you've stitched up both of your sides, should be looking something a little like this. So you've got the ridge on one side and it's flat on the other. So now we are going to make the ribbing for the neckline. And if you have tried on your cape so far, you'll notice that this makes a V at the front. If you like the V and you want to keep the V in the ribbing, I will link one of the videos that I made for a vest that has a V-neck and making the two parts to the V that I made for that V-neck and sewing them around here at the right length, I think would work perfectly to make this into a V-neck but I'm actually going to try to straighten it out. So we're basically gonna do some ribbing that gets bigger in the center and then smaller again when it goes back around the other side. So for the ribbing, we're going to make a slip knot, insert our hook and chain up nine. Once you've got nine, we are going to skip that first stitch that we did and we're going to do slip stitches into all of the other stitches. So that would be eight in total. So we're skipping that first chain, the closest chain to the hook and going into the second chain from the hook with a slip stitch and then going all the way back down with slip stitches. And now we've made it to the end, we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now we're going to do back loop slip stitches. So for the back loop slip stitches, we're only going into that back loop. This first stitch here is the chain. So for this next one, this is the front loop here. This is the back loop here. You can see that there's a little V and we're gonna go into the back loop only, just like we did when we did the panels of our cape. So you're going to insert into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. 
So now just continue doing back loop slip stitches all the way down. And the majority of the ribbing for the neck is going to be eight back loop slip stitches repeating, um, but we will be making a couple of variations to that when we get to both the center of the neckline at the front and the center of the neckline at the back. There's no difference between the front and the back. It's really either or. I've done my eight back loop slip stitches. Now I'm going to chain up one again, turn my work and go back down doing eight back loop slip stitches. So now you're going to go ahead and continue doing these rows of eight back loop slip stitches until you've done 28 rows. This isn't going to count the foundation chain. For a size extra small to small, you'll need to do 22 rows. For a small medium, you'll need to do 28 rows. For a medium large, you'll need to do 34 rows. For a large to extra large, it's 40 rows. For an XL to 2X, it's 46 rows. And for 2X to 3X, it's 52 rows. If you need to make a bigger size than this, you just need to add six rows. However, I did want to mention that making this neck portion bigger will make the neck hole bigger. So if you have a smaller neck and shoulders or you just don't want the hole to be that big, feel free to make one of the other size measurements for this neck trim. And it's just going to pull the cape a bit tighter. I don't think it will be a problem. It will just mean it's a little bit tighter around the top, but it should still be big enough no matter what size you make if you're making the cape part in your size. Once you've done as many rows as you need to do for the size you're making, join back in and I will show you the next part. Also, in this next section of instructions, I'm going to be using the row count for the small medium. If you want to know the row count for any of the other sizes and you're a bit confused, please leave me a comment and I will write out the rows and the row counts that you need for this section. So now I've just finished my 28th row and we're going to go back down this row to make row 29 but we're going to do an increase when we get to the end. So just go ahead and do your back loop slip stitches like normal going down row 29. This V section is the same no matter what size you're making so just ignore the row count but do what I'm doing in the video. And now into that last stitch, we're going to do two back loop slip stitches. So we're going to do one like normal, and then we're going to go straight back into that same stitch and do another one. And now we're going to chain up one like normal, turn our work and do one back loop slip stitch into each stitch. We're not going to do an increase in the even numbered rows, only the odd numbered rows. So this row will have nine back loop slip stitches. And now that we've made it to the top, we're gonna to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to do the same thing. For the next eight rows, on all of the odd numbered rows, we're going to be doing that increase at the end of the row, and all even numbered rows are going to have no increase. So now I've made it down to the end of the 31st row and into that last back loop slip stitch we're going to do two back loop slip stitches so there's one and I'm going to do one more then we're going to chain up turn our work and now for row 32 we're going to have 10 back loop slip stitches so you can continue doing this for the next once we've finished this row, the next six rows. So you're basically going to have five rows with an increase and five rows without in this section. And it's going to take us from row 28 to row 38. So once you get to row 38, join back in and I will show you what to do next. So now I've just finished row 38 and you can see we've got a bit of a V going here. So now for the next row, which is row 39, I'm not going to do any increases or decreases. We're just gonna go ahead and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. No matter what size you're making, 
this part isn't going to change. The only thing that will change is the length of this straight section here and the following straight sections that we're going to do. This actual V doesn't need to change for the size because no matter what size you make, the V is going to be the same. So now I'm just doing my last back loop slip stitch. I'm going to turn around and go straight back. So this is row 40. Well, 40 if you're doing a small, if you're doing any other of the other sizes, check the description box and I will leave a guide about how to adjust it for your size. But especially with this pattern for the cape, it's very easy to adjust for size because you don't really need to make too many adjustments. It's not fitted, so it won't matter if it's ever so slightly smaller than your normal size or larger, it's still gonna fit you. So I'm just doing my last back loop slip stitch into row 39 and I'm not doing any increases. I'm going to chain up and this time now on all of the even rows we're going to do a decrease. So into these first two back loop slip stitches I'm going to join them together. So to do that I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, then I'm going to go straight into that next stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through and pull through both of the loops on the hook. Then I'm going to continue going down the rest of the row as normal. So basically we are decreasing each row by one stitch to mirror the other rows where we decreased, where we increased each row by one stitch. So now we're just doing the opposite. So this is row 40. So from now on the odd numbered rows are going to be flat while the even numbered rows are going to have a decrease at the start of the even numbered row. So this is an odd row, row 41. So we're just going to go ahead and not do any increases or decreases. So into that last stitch. Now we're gonna chain up one and we're going to do our back loop slip stitch decrease again. So going from that first stitch into the second stitch and pull through two. And so now you can go ahead for this decrease section will be 10 rows again. So we need to do five rows with the decrease and five rows without. So this will bring us up to row 48. So go ahead and continue until you get to row 48 and you're back to having eight back loop slip stitches in each row. So now I've just finished row 48 and because row 48 was an even number, it had a decrease at the start. So now what we are going to do is we're going to flatten back out and continue doing our rows of eight back loop slip stitches for the next 56 rows. So if you're doing a different size, you're just going to double the number that you did for this section. And I'm doing the small medium. So my section was 28 and now I'm going to do 56 for this next section. So you just have to double this part. For an extra small to small, it's 44 rows. For a small medium, it's 56 rows. For a medium large, it's 68 rows. For a large to extra large, it's 80 rows. For an XL to 2X, it's 92 rows. And for 2X to 3X, it's 104 rows. But if you're making a bigger size, you just need to add 12 rows. If you made your neck trim in a different size to the size you were making your cape, just make sure that you're consistent the whole way through and you do the same size for parts A and B of the neck trim. So I'm going to go ahead and just do eight back loop slip stitches repeating for the next 56 rows, which will bring us up to row 104. So just go ahead, going back to the flat section where we did eight back loop slip stitches turn around and keep going until you get to row 104 or 56 of this section or if you're doing another size whatever number that is for you just make sure that it's double this section and this can be the same no matter what size you do so go ahead and join back in when you get there and we're going to be doing this again I will give you a little refresher when we get there but otherwise you can just keep going 
and do another one of these. Okay, so once you've made it up to the end of row 104, it should be looking something a little bit like this. And we're just going to do another one of these now. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing that we did before by doing 10 rows from here to here with an increase on every odd numbered row. So that would be five increases. And then we're going to do the decreases on every even numbered row going back up to meet back to do our eight back loop slip stitches. So basically we're going to do the exact same thing we did here. And then once we've finished that, we're going to mirror what's on this side by doing 28 rows of eight back loop slip stitches with no increases or decreases. For a size small medium, for all of the other sizes, check the graphic on the screen. So in the end, it'll have two bumps with an even number of rows on either side and double the amount of rows in the middle. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do first my increases and then my decreases. And then I'm going to flatten out and do the last 28 rows with no increases or decreases. So this next increase and then decrease section will bring us up to row 124. If you're making small medium. And then we're going to add 28 rows to that, which will bring us to row 152. So when you get to row 152, join back in and I will show you what to do next. So I've just done my first increase because I'm on row 105 and it's an odd number. Once you join back in, I'll show you what to do next. If you need to see how to do the increase and decrease section again to make the little V, just check back in the video for what we've just done because it's identical. Okay, so once you have finished your last row in your neckband section, join our two halves together. So you just wanna grab the other end and make sure that it's not twisted. And then you can use the slip stitch method that we used previously to join your two halves together. Once you've joined the two halves together, you're going to chain up one and pull a very long tail. You want this to be at least double the length of the neck ribbing, but probably even want more than that just to be safe. So now that we've got our super long tail, we're going to use that to join our neck piece onto the body of our cape. So to do that, you need to grab your cape. So my cape is going to need to be the, the way in that doesn't have the ridge. So currently I've got it in the way that does have the ridge. So I'm gonna turn it in the other way so you can see that ridge is hidden. So grab our neck piece and we want this to be the correct way in as well. So you can see we've got a ridge here. I'm gonna turn it in the other way so that we don't have the ridge showing. And I'm going to line it up and put a stitch marker in the very bottom of the V to go into the middle where we joined the two panels together. And I'm gonna do the same to the other side. And then we're going to stretch it out and put a stitch marker into where it meets in the middle of each edge. So you'll need to do these one at a time. I'm gonna put my stitch marker into here. And now I'm going to hold the middles together, stretch it out and put my stitch marker in the fold. And do the same to the other side. So now you can thread the tail that you left onto your darning needle and stitch the neckline onto the body. So to do that, I'm going to flip my neckline inside out over the top of the top of the cape. And then I can just stitch it all the way around like this, making sure to stretch it as you go. If you wanna put in more stitch markers, that'd be a good idea. Put some in the middle there and make sure that when you're stitching it down, it's fully stretched out so that 
the sides line up and when you let go it should pull the top of the cape in a little bit you don't want it to be too bunchy though so go ahead and stitch those two parts together once you have finished stitching the neck ribbing onto your cape the last thing to do is a bit of an edge on the bottom going all the way around the outside so if you like the way it looks right now you can just leave it but it may stretch a little bit so I'm going to put some trim around the bottom so what you're going to need to do is fold your cape in half with the two points touching each other so you can see here we've got it like this and now we're going to find the middle point on the side. It doesn't need to be exact because we are going to be going all the way around. So basically what you're going to do is grab your yarn and make a slip knot. I'm going to shift my cape around the other way so that I'm holding it to the end and I'm going to put the loop on my hook and then insert my hook into one of the stitches and do a slip stitch to join on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a slip stitch going all the way around the edge. So into every row, we're going to do one slip stitch. So you can see this is one row here and then this divot is another row and then this is one row, divot is another row. So into every raised and divoted row, we're going to put one slip stitch. So you can just go ahead and continue going all the way around the base of the cape, putting one slip stitch into every stitch, but we are going to add a couple of extra stitches when we get to the points of the V. So join back in when you get to the point of the first V that you come to, and I'll show you what to do, and then we can continue going all the way around. Okay, so now we're up to that first point, going around the perimeter of our cape. So I'm going to do a slip stitch in for this row. Now I need to make sure I do one for the next row. And now we're into that section where it's joined. And I'm going to put three slip stitches into this little section before we get to that next proper row, because I don't want it to be pulled too tight. Cause if you pull this section too tight, it's going to flatten it out. So I'm just going to go one, you can go back into the same hole or you can go sort of slightly next to it. I'm just going to go slightly next to it and do one, two, three. And now we can continue on doing our slip stitches going all the way around. For every row of the trim that we do, we're going to be doing the three slip stitches into that end piece but I will show you what to do for the next row first and then you can continue on doing that all the way around. So keep going until you get back to where we started the slip stitches and I will show you how to start the next row. So now I've almost made it up to the start. You can see where my first slip stitch was. So I'm just going to do my last couple. And now what we're going to do for this next row is we're just going to go into that back loop. So we're not going to turn around. We're just going to keep going around into that back loop, doing more slip stitches. So we're not going to do any chains or anything. We've just done our last slip stitch. We're going to go straight into the back loop of that first slip stitch with another slip stitch. And then we're just going to go all the way around doing back loop slip stitches into that first row of slip stitches. This is what you're going to do now for the next three rows. So we're going to have four rows in total and you're just going to keep going all the way around. And when you get to the V's, we're going to do three slip stitches into that middle slip stitch. If you want to see how to do that, join back in when you get to your first point, but otherwise you can just keep going all the way around and around doing three slip stitches into the point. But other than that, just one slip stitch into every back loop of the previous row. Now I've made it back up to one of the V's and I'm just going to do my last slip stitch into the one before. And now this here is the middle slip stitch. So this one is the center of the point. And so I'm going to do three slip stitches into that one stitch. So we're gonna go one, back into that same back loop, two, and one more is 
three. And now I'm just going to continue going around as normal. And that's going to leave the end looking a bit pointed. Uh, if you feel like it's getting a bit pointy, you can just put two slip stitches into that one stitch rather than three. It's completely up to you how pointed you want it to be, but if you want it to be quite pointed, I'd put three, and if you want it to be a little bit less pointed, put two. If you put one, it's going to make it quite flat. So I wouldn't recommend that unless that's the look you're going for. So now you just need to go all the way around doing either two or three back loop slip stitches into those two corner points, but otherwise just doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until you've done four rows in total. Okay, so now I've just finished going all the way around the bottom four times and you can see this is where we started here and we've got our four back loop slip stitch rows here. I'm just going to do my last two back loop slip stitches into those last two stitches so that it's equal with where we started. So now you can see. So what you're gonna do is cut a tail and if you have a darning needle, you could use it, but you can also use your hook. Just feed the end through the next stitch and then tuck it in on the back side, and you won't even really be able to see the join. So now that you've finished that, you've finished your cape. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I will get back to you. If you make any of my projects, please tag me on Instagram at stephtashi underscore handmade.